Rome, 64 AD. The Emperor Nero has unleashed his fury against the Christians. Their crime? Proclaiming a king higher than Caesar. Setting fire to the city, Nero places the blame on the Christians and launches a new campaign to wipe them out. Families are separated, children left homeless, as thousands are sold into slavery or thrown to the lions. Escaping the panic of the fire and dodging the advancing soldiers, a group of children find shelter in the gentle care of Ben and Helena, a local baker and his wife. Here, the children discover an amazing secret network of daring men and women who risk their lives to help one another and to tell the stories of the great storyteller, the one called Jesus. And so, awaiting the day when their parents will return, Anna, Cyrus, Justin, and Marcus embark on the adventure of a lifetime, together with Ben, Helena, and their friends in the Christian underground. Their mission, to keep the stories of Jesus alive. This is their story. They are the Story Keepers. we bake to keep Rome fed. keeping Sakai. <laughs> that kid's always running late. I know, but with so many guards patrolling the streets. Helena, you worry too much. Zach's just fine. I'm sure of it. All right, you want me? Come and get me. I knew that wouldn't work. a path anyway. Ben! Ben! The Romans have captured the Story Keeper in the Northern District! I know, I know. Here, try one of these rolls. A roll? Ben, Christians from all over are coming to the Northern District tonight, and there's no one to tell a story. You've got to come. I wish I could, Sakai, but there's a meeting here tonight. Ben's going to tell a story about John the Baptist. John the who? John the Baptist. He was the cousin of Jesus, and he lived in the desert near the Jordan River. He ate honey and locusts to stay alive. Honey-flavored insects? Yuck! You see, John was a great prophet, and when he came out of the desert, he did not like what he saw. began to tell the people to change their ways, not to steal, and not to cheat. If you have two coats, give one to someone who has none. If you have food, share that too. 
people everywhere were talking about this strange man. Be baptized in the river as a sign that you want to change your ways. I baptize you with water, but the man who follows me will be greater than I am. I am not worthy to untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And sure enough, not long after that, Jesus left his home in Nazareth to join the crowds at the riverbank. John was nervous. He knew he wasn't worthy to baptize Jesus. But Jesus smiled at him, and John knew it was all right. Then something wonderful happened. You are my beloved son. With you, I am pleased. After that, Jesus journeyed into the desert for 40 days and nights. But uh, I'll tell you about that some other time. Look, Ben, that was great. But what about the people in the Northern District? They aren't going to have a story tonight unless we do something. Exactly. Justin. What's that? It's a story for the Christians in the Northern District. And you're going to take it to them. That's a great idea. Oh, there's still one problem. Getting to the Northern District. The streets are practically paved with guards. There must be some way to get through. We know a way. Captain Justin to the rescue. I want to be captain. Me too. They'll be okay, won't they? Of course. Why, when I was a kid, we did it all the time. Stop with the splashing. I already had one bath today, and I'm not taking another. Oh, yeah? That's three fish, seven rocks, one sandal. Ah! Ah! And approximately 356 pounds of assorted children. No, no, this won't do at all. Children and such floating about in the water duct. As aqueduct inspector, I'm afraid it's my duty to give you all a citation. Yes, sir. Won't happen again, sir. Let's get out of here. A bit old to be playing the aqueduct, aren't you, friend? Who, me? Well, uh... We weren't playing. We're Junior Praetorian Water Scouts. And he's our troop leader. I am? I mean, I am. Mm-hmm. What's that you've got behind your back? Bird. Mmm, I'll take some of that. No! What? Right, it's kind of stale. So you're one of those Christians who never met one in person. Halt! You'll never take me alive! Of course, if you want to take me alive, we could work it that way too. Take him to the Imperial Palace. Caesar will want to interrogate him. Of course he will. Just before he feeds him to the lions. This is terrible. We've got to cook up some way of getting Zakai out of the palace. Cook up a way. That's it. Huh? Don't just stand there. We've got a lot of baking to do. Helena, what does baking have to do with rescuing Zakai? Remember the Emperor's Sweet Tooth. Of course. Of course. Let's get baking, everyone. But what are we baking? A feast for a king, my dear. <laughs> a feast for a king. Live from Caesar's palace, it's Lucius, Demetrius, Ahito Barbas, and Nero! <laughs> and so I must sing this sad song of despair. For the job of a poor Caesar, tis more than most could bear. 
Poor Zack. It sounds like they're torturing him. Your Nero is great! Please stop, you're too kind. God, to the lions at once! <laughs> Hail, Caesar. What have we here? We found this Christian near the aqueduct, Caesar. He was carrying this. A Christian? You know, I've never understood why you people insist on throwing away your lives for the sake of some dead Jewish carpenter. He's not dead, and all over Rome, thousands like me wait for the day he will return, and Rome will fall. Not in for a long wait. Centurion, what's on the scroll? Some kind of story, Caesar, about this Jesus of theirs. Well, that ought to be entertaining. Read us your little story, Christian. Who knows? Perhaps you'll convert us all. <laughs> you heard, Caesar. Read. You don't want to hear the story. You just want to make fun of it. I'll not dishonor my lord for Caesar's entertainment. I am your lord, Christian. Read the story, I command you. I'd rather die. As you wish. But first, I simply must know what you're dying for. Centurion, what does it say? It starts with Jesus and his disciples at the Sea of Galilee, Caesar. Well, go on. Read it. Read it. That evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Come, let's cross over to the other side. But before long, a furious storm came up. And terrible waves began to break over the bow of the disciples' boat, filling it with water. Master, please wake up. Master, please, don't you care if we drown? Upon his command, the wind died down until the sea was completely calm. Why are you frightened? Do you still not trust me? And they turned to one another and said, What sort of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, what are you all staring at? I've never heard such a ridiculous story in my entire life. It's completely absurd. Yes, Caesar, absolutely absurd. No doubt about it. In fact, I'd have to say, on a scale from one to Gosh ten... Shush up, Snivellus. Shushing up, Caesar. Destroy the scroll at once. Yes, Caesar. And as for this wretch, I want him thrown to the lions at the games tomorrow. He shall be an example to all of Rome of how we deal with Christians. <laughs> I sure hope Ben gets here soon. The thought of Zakai being held prisoner by that madman, Nero. Why is Nero mad at Zakai, Ben? Well, he's not that kind of mad, Marcus. What kind of mad is he? Well, he's like that man Jesus met at Garasa. Who? Well, you see, one day, Jesus and his disciples sailed across the Sea of Galilee to a place called Garasa, where there lived a wild man. He slept in a cave, and the local villagers were terrified of him. Shortly after Jesus and the disciples arrived, the wild man appeared before them. What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I'm out of this man, evil spirit. For God's sake, don't torment me! What is your name? I am Legion. We are as numerous as the Roman army. And Legion begged Jesus not to send him away. Send us among the pigs. Let us go into them. <laughs> Hmm. 
When the villagers heard what had happened, they came to see for themselves. They were astonished to see the wild man now fully clothed and in his own right mind. They became frightened and begged Jesus to leave the area. As Jesus and the others were about to sail away, the man appeared. He begged Jesus to let him go with them. Go home to your family and friends. Tell them what God has done for you. I like the Legion story, Ben. Is that the end? <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> Look, we can cross. Hold on, everybody. We made it, we made it. It's a little early for a victory celebration. Get your disguises ready, everyone. The tough part of our mission is just beginning. Make up the words as I go along. No one is as clever by far. My amazing talent will make me a star. Yes, that's it. Wonderful, Caesar. Simply wonderful. I'm not finished, Snivellus. What are the wonderful citizens? Are you deaf? I said I'm not finished. Encore! Encore! Snivellus! I am going to kill! What a lot of waxy build-up you have. You really should clean your ears more often. Please, your divinity. Your voice is a symphonic sensation, a melodious melody. And Caesar, I am Ben Pierre, the famous baker from Gaul, and this is my family. We have brought pastry for the emperor. Pastry, you say? We, oui, in honor of uh, the 21st birthday of Caesar's uncle's third cousin on his mother's side, twice removed, uh, we have prepared a selection of our finest culinary treats. Third cousin on my mother's side? We, oui. and uh, now, if your majesty pleases, I will describe for him the pastries. Over here, we have the fruit-filled pastries. Ah. Cyrus, it's Ben. <laughs> Look at that outfit. Hey, this thing's loose. What do you want? I suppose you're here to torture me. Well, go ahead. I'm not afraid of you. What's this? Poison? It's water. If I wanted to kill you, I wouldn't bother with poison. I see your point. And these are our famous cream-filled pastries. Mmm, delicious. And lastly, the creme de la creme. <laughs> you mustn't eat this one. This pastry is special. It is my world-famous secret poison torture pastry. One bite and... How delightful. Well, I simply must see a demonstration. It is a pity you don't have any of those loathsome Christians around. <laughs> they make especially good torture pastry victims. You don't say. God, fetch me the Christian prisoner at once. You know, you don't have to die. I've seen Nero pardon people like you before. Yeah, right. If they deny Jesus. You don't have to deny a thing. You just have to accept that Nero is also a god. Then I guess I have to die. Hmm. Who is this Jesus that inspires such crazy loyalty in his followers? I would like to have met this man. You still can. But he's dead. Can I... Shh! Caesar demands to see the prisoner at once. Welcome back, Christian. I didn't want to send you to the lions on an empty stomach. My baker friend here has a pastry that's to die for. <laughs> ben, what are you doing here? Don't worry, everything's under control. Just follow my lead. 
And now, Christian wretch, eat this poison torture pastry so we can all watch you go into convulsions and collapse dead upon the floor. No, I won't. Oh. <clears throat> Everything's getting dark. I'm so cold. Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> Did you see his tortured expression? Did you hear his agonized gasps? Wasn't it wonderful? I'll take six dozen of those pastries for the next senator's ball. Of course, Caesar. And now, for no extra charge, we will remove the body from your imperial sight. Well... How refreshing to have someone take the rubbish out without being asked. <gasps> Caesar, bless you. Thank you. It's a trick. Stop them. After the men. Poison torture pastry indeed. Did you really think you could fool Caesar? Throw them to the lions at oh, once. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Are you crazy? Come on, help me! Let's get him! I only hope you perform as well in the lion pits. <laughs> Look out! My statue! My beautiful statue! Ben! Over here! Oh. Hurry, before I change my mind. They're getting away! After them! Zakai was supposed to be here hours ago. We better go tell the others. But what are we going to tell them? Those people risked their lives to be here tonight. I know that. But what can we do? We don't have a story. I guess you're right. Wait, look! There they are. Ben, get ready to hand off the scroll. No problem. I've got it right here. Hey. Uh-oh. What would I do without you? Ben? Sorry. Thank you. Thank you all. Don't mention it! Because of your faith and bravery, hundreds of people will hear a new story tonight. What story will they hear, Ben? Well, it's a story about the time Jesus and his disciples got caught in a terrible storm on the sea. That evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Come, let's cross over to the other side. 